Welcome to the CFA Level 1 presentation on Confidence Intervals. In this presentation, we will get an introduction to confidence intervals and we will look at their advantages. We will also learn how to compute confidence intervals for large samples with known population variance. In the next video, we will look at the remaining three cases of computing confidence intervals for large samples with unknown population variance as well as small samples with known or unknown population variances. Now before we get into the discussion on confidence intervals, it will be helpful to look at an example. Suppose you want to estimate the average salary of all MBA graduates in the United States. And you look at the following two statements. The first statement, the average salary of all MBA graduates in the US is estimated to be $120,000. And the second statement, we are 95% confident that the average salary of all MBA graduates in the US lies between $90,000 and $150,000. If you compare the two statements, you will see that statement two gives you a lot more information than statement one. In fact, statement two gives you all the information from statement one, plus a lot more. Statement one just gives you a point estimate of this figure. But most likely, the actual average salary is not this amount, but statement one gives you no idea of this uncertainty. It does not tell you that the actual amount is most likely not this number. But if you look at statement two, it tells us right away that we don't know for sure what is the average salary. We just have a range, but it tells us how much confidence we have in this range which is 95% confidence. And finally, you will notice that this point estimate of $120,000 also falls within this range. So as we said earlier, statement two gives you all the information from statement one plus a lot more. It turns out that statement two is actually a 95% confidence interval. We will see how on the next slide. What is a confidence interval? A confidence interval is a range of values expected to capture the parameter value for a given degree of confidence. Now, parameter value refers to things like the population mean mu or the population standard deviation sigma. Now, if you go back to the statement from previous slide, which I've pasted again here, we will see that this is a 95% confidence interval. And that is because we have a range of values. So we meet this criteria. We are capturing the parameter value, which is the population mean or average salary of all MBA graduates in the US and we have a confidence level, a degree of confidence. So we meet all the criteria for a confidence interval. Now in the CFA curriculum, any time you have to compute a confidence interval, you will always use this expression, point estimate plus minus standard error times reliability factor. A point estimate is a statistic such as sample mean x bar or sample standard deviation small s. These point estimates are used to estimate the population parameter population mean mu or population standard deviation sigma for example. We always get the point estimate from our sample. 
a standard error is equal to the population standard deviation sigma divided by the square root of your sample size. And if we don't know the population standard deviation, we just use the sample standard deviation s divided by the square root of the sample size n. And then we have the reliability factor. You can think of the reliability factor as a number that we use to scale the standard error. This reliability factor depends on the degree of confidence and also the sampling distribution of the point estimate. We will look at reliability factor in more detail on the next slide. Now let's create a 95% confidence interval for the average salary of all MBA graduates in the United States. Now we'll estimate the population mean, which is the average salary of all MBA graduates using the sample mean. So you take a random sample of 36 MBA graduates and obtain a sample mean of $120,000. And suppose somehow you know that the population standard deviation is this amount, $91,000. $8,836.73. Now in practice, you will almost never know the population standard deviation. But in this example, let's assume that you do know. So in this case, we know that the point estimate is $120,000. The standard error would be 91836.73 divided by the square root of the sample size, which is 36, and times reliability factor. Now let's look at this concept, reliability factor. Now remember that we are only dealing with large samples in this presentation, which means any sample size of at least 30. Whenever we are dealing with large samples, we only need to ask ourselves one question. Do we know the population variance or not? If we do, we use the Z statistic as the reliability factor. And if we don't know the population variance, we use the T statistic as the reliability factor. But what value of Z statistic do we use? Remember we are doing a 95% confidence interval, which means we go to the standard normal distribution right here, and we look for that Z value, which covers 95% of all observations. I'm assuming you know how to look up Z values for, from the normal distribution. If you look up the value, it will be 1.96. So if we go back to our formula, we knew that the point estimate was 120,000. We knew that the standard error was this amount and the reliability factor is 1.96. And then if you do the math, you will get your 95% confidence interval as $90,000 to $150,000. We interpret this as we are 95% confident that the population mean, which means the average salary of all MBA graduates in the US, lies within the above confidence interval. So it lies between $90,000 and $150,000. There are two important things I would like you to remember. If you look at this formula, you would notice that the size of confidence interval is determined by these two factors, standard error and reliability factor. Standard error, as we saw, is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, or if you don't know the population variance, the sample standard deviation divided by square root of n. The first thing is, as soon as you increase the sample size, this standard error will decrease, which means 
your confidence interval will become narrower. So if you want to obtain narrow confidence interval, which tells you your estimate is more precise, you should increase your sample size. The second thing to remember, the higher is your confidence level, the wider will be your confidence interval. And that has got to do with the reliability factor. In our example, we used our confidence in level of 95% and we got reliability factor of 1.96. If we were to increase our confidence level to 99%, this reliability factor would have been 2.58, which would have made this confidence interval wider. And that makes sense. The more sure you want to be, the wider has to be your confidence interval. Now in the next video, we will look at the remaining cases, large samples with unknown population variance, as well as small samples. This brings us to an end to this presentation. If you found the video useful, please make sure to like it and to subscribe to our channel. Thanks very much for watching and wish you the best of luck on the exam. Thank you.